How's it going everyone? Javita here with another viewer request video, this time from Evo. And he has kind of a two-part question and he's suggesting I do a video on how to see the number of logged in players on a planet and what the icon on the on the, the bottom center of the HUD means. And I had a bit of confusion of what he meant by the icon at the bottom center, um, but then he kind of elaborates that he thinks it might be like the logo of Thurka because when he passes through a portal, it changes or, you know, he gets a similar square icon. And the first one is pretty simple. Uh, you just look at a, any portal and you will see the number of players right there that is connected to the other side of the portal, basically. So, if, uh, for instance, I'm on Solom, and if I look at another portal that goes to Solom, I can see that there's 16 players. Uh, you can also see your latency right there if you have it set to always show. Uh, I kind of wish it always showed on portals, but you can come over here to settings, network, and then connection indicator. You can switch that to always show, and then you'll always have this little indicator up here telling you how fast your connection is. Uh, you can go ahead and just show it only when you have a bad connection, and then anytime you look at a portal, if you have a good connection, it's hidden. So kind of wish that was there all the time. Uh, the catch to this is, is that you do have to be able to look through a portal that is connected to the same world. So this is Muntean 7 and it shows 12 players there. Up over here and you can see that there's 15 players on Solom. So I guess you could kind of go through and then look back behind you to see how many players are connected to that particular world. Another way to do this is through the debugging menu. So you can hit F1 by default to bring up this bar up here. Go to debugging information and it gives you this window that you can drag around, resize, do all sorts of things. But it's pretty awesome all the information you can see from here. If you come down here to game state and then click on players, it will give you a list of all the players connected to a server. If you want to leave this open, then you can just hit F1, it closes this top menu, and then you can run around with this thing <laughs> on in your face. So as you can see here, it shows that there's joined 15 players, but over here it says 16. That is because you won't find yourself in this list. However, as far as the portal is concerned, you are counted. So just a little side note there. And to answer the next question, it took me a while because I thought he was talking about maybe this icon, but I'm pretty sure he's talking about this one because it, this one will change depending on what you're looking at. So as you can see, Solom has the three rows of three dots. But if you come over to Muntean 7, you can see that it's a much different or slightly different symbol. Uh, you got three dots in the middle with kind of two eyes off to either side. And if we jump over to the Muntean 7 hub, we can look over here. Of course, Muntean 7 has the same icon, but we can also look at Epsilo and that has the same icon. But if we come over here to Scepterphon, you can see it has a slightly different icon. It has this connected dots right there. Come over here, and Elipor has the same icon. So to kind of explain this further, all of these, they're actually called glyphs, and they all have meanings. Let's jump over to the web browser again. And if we come over here, uh, BoundlessCrafting.com, wonderful site made by Stretchius, and you can see that there's all sorts of craziness going on here. So we have letter glyphs, we have number glyphs, there's even like word glyphs. So there's a glyph translator and you could like manually type this stuff in by connecting the dots here. So what, the tier three kind of looks like that. And unfortunately, not all the stuff is actually in here, what these are mean. Maybe they just haven't been deciphered yet, or maybe it kind of got forgotten. I'm not really sure on that. If we take a look at these number glyphs, we can basically get a pretty good idea what's going on. At first glance, these number glyphs, they look pretty cool, and you kind of have no clue, like, is there a system to this? But if you take a look at this, zero, there are no breaks in the outside come over here one now there is one gap in the outside border 
and then two there's two gaps and you kind of see where we're going here that's you know they're counting by the numbers of breaks in this outside border uh, the inside stuff doesn't really matter it's just literally counting the little gaps on the outside so if we take this kind of concept and try to apply it to what we see with the portals and back over to the game and we can see that Elipore it's a tier one or one step above the home worlds and so we have one connection come over to something like a ring world and now we see that there is two connections so it's a tier two planet tier one planet and if we head over to look at the berlin portal we'll see that there are no connections the exact same as solum so a tier zero planet and so actually recently with the last patch a lot of planets kind of got reclassified so <laughs> Epsilo used to be a tier one planet since it's a moon but I guess since because it has gems it's now considered the same level as a ring world so it's kind of it's kind of interesting that it's technically a moon but then it's the difficulty of a ring world so a little, little bit interesting there so to take this even further so there's a huge number of glyph words. Uh, you might be probably the most iconic one is the Boundless logo itself, which simply translates to Boundless. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But if we take a look, all of these uncompleted crafting machines, you can see that they're both color coded and coded by their symbol. So you can see it printed on the box. You can see it up here when I look at it, as well as when you look at a completed crafting machine. And there's the red coloring again for compactor. So uh, despite there being many different colors of wood for crafting machines, you can see that the color is always consistent. So blue is always going to be an extractor. White is always going to be a workbench. And this extends even into the repair bonuses when using gem spanners on machines. So if you use a diamond spanner on a workbench, you'll get double repair. Use a ruby spanner on a compactor, you get double repair. So, kind of get the idea there. And these things are literally baked in the game everywhere. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Take a look here, and tools even have glyphs built into them. So, it's not for the individual unique type of tool. So, like all gym hammers will have this uh, glyph. And then all metal axes will have this glyph. But as you can see over here, this hammer, because it is a hammer instead of an axe, it has a different glyph. However, the, the copper hammer would have the same glyph. So it's kind of based off of what type of tool it is. Like, okay, we got an axe, but then all metal axes have the same glyph. So if I were to put a gold and silver axe up here, they would both share the same glyph because they are both alloy axes. So pretty awesome. Furthermore, we can come over here and see that each refined block has its own glyph. So pretty, pretty awesome. So at first glance, Boundless really doesn't have a whole lot of lore, but however, it kind of still is there. <laughs> so if you can see here, uh, this actually says something, and this is actually my name in Orshin, or how, whatever you want to call it. So this first dot here is kind of an opening of a sentence. This last dot over here is the close, and we got the J I I B I T A. So pretty awesome. <laughs> And uh, I was actually watching some really old videos of back when Boundless was known as Ort Online, and players would actually like leave messages <laughs> written in you know blocks or whatever for each other. But I guess that was back before world regeneration. It's not quite as feasible to do that now, but pretty pretty awesome. But another interesting thing is. Here's the symbol for storage. However, it's also the symbol for home worlds and your whatever you want to call this down here. So I guess right here you could argue, okay, this is the storage for your health and energy, uh, storage for your blocks, and then doesn't really necessarily explain 
why the same he symbol is used for the home worlds other than I guess well it's your home it's your storage spot kind of a, a dual meaning I guess so pretty awesome it looks like even the sign has the same symbol so it's I guess just a generic for storing just about anything stuff information um, beginning areas <laughs> And another little tidbit <laughs> is that you can come over here and look at the totem and see that there are letters etched into the totem. And I'm certainly not the first one to try to translate this, but I did play around and try to translate it. And basically, either the method used to translate is flawed or it's just simply gibberish, which it probably is gibberish. But let's come over where I've tried to translate this. Here we go. And as you can see, I have different screenshots of the different sides and come over here. And so this dot right here, just a single dot kind of up in the top uh, right corner, that is basically the opening to the sentence. And come over here, we have the opposite dot, meaning the close of the sentence. So whatever this totem is trying to say, it starts here and ends over here. And then who knows what goes on in the middle. But as you can see, uh, it mirrors pretty exactly. And then I literally uh, copied and pasted it over here so that it stands for DAS. So yeah, I don't know what's going on there. And as we go on, and yeah, we got this line covering up and this crack, so that could be two lines, kind of like an equal sign, which would be an E, or it this could be broken up and just be two dots, and that might make it an I. But either way, <laughs> G E E I M N I, you like, well, yeah, it's pretty much gibberish. And again, over here, we have a little bit of line covering this up. So it could be just a single bar or it could be a bar with a dot, which would be either a C or a Z. But still, either way, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And pretty much the same story over here. So I doubt it has any real meaning. You could certainly look at this and try to interpret it in a number of different ways. Uh, I was assuming that all the letters would be oriented towards the top of the totem. However, you could maybe turn it on its side and say, okay, this is the top, and then try to reinterpret the letters. I think that worked for one of the sides, but I didn't explore it exhaustively. So who knows, maybe there is a secret message encoded on this totem that actually means something. So, but anyway, I think I've gotten way off on a huge tangent. Uh, so, just to kind of recap, you can look at portals to see how many players are connected to the other side of the world. Uh, you could also use the debugging menu right here by hitting F1 and going to debugging information. And as far as the symbols right here, when you look at the portals, those kind of denote the difficulty of the planet. So the, the nine dots, that would be a tier zero. And then if there's one connection, that's a tier one, two connections, tier two, and so on whenever they get around to adding the even harder planets. So pretty, pretty awesome. Anyway, this was Javita. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more like this, and if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Also, if you like my channel and want to get cool perks, check out my Patreon page. Till next time, peace.